So you have the otter switch on the manifold, which is I can show you on the car, um, which is wired in through there. That's just an electromagnet. Pops up the valve, lets the fuel through, and that's regulated. When that pops up, that needle drops down, sucks down on vacuum, and then you can adjust your mixture by that nut there. On, that's just for the choke circuit though. Float sits in there, it rises, and I'll go and get one to show you. That's your float. Goes in there, your fuel inlet is there with the needle I've just cleaned. When the float comes up, it hits that, which is why I just set the height and stops the fuel coming into the carburetor. As you accelerate, it uses fuel, that comes down and lets more fuel in. You have to make sure the pin's centred, otherwise it hits on the bowl. That lives in there. Then you have a serrated of that. Uh, which car was that? That's rear car, so you want me on with R written on it. It was on there. And you have a flat washer serrated washer to let the float chamber breathe and that has a breather pipe on it which is why the thread's too long but when it's on the car you have a breather pipe I've already cleaned all the carbs and set the needles and the jet heights I've got to put the starter carb back together which I can do now so is there anything you particularly find when doing this that happens time and time again or? Yeah, generally they're just set up wrong. Okay. People Well when they try to do a maintenance on the car or Yeah, yeah, they're quite they're an easy carb to do because you haven't got an idle adjustment on them, you've just got an air mixture screw there. Well that you've got a mixture screw there, which adjusts your main jet up and down for the strength of the mixture air fuel ratio. But you don't have an idle setting, it's, it's called an air bypass valve. So you adjust those to let less or more air in through that hole there. And that's your idle speed settings on them. Which they can be quite weird to do. Right. This is a starter carburetor. You don't have a choke as such or a an automatic enrichment in, enriching in device I call them you have a switch on your inlet manifold a thermostatic switch so when that fires it fires that solenoid opens that valve through that hole there and then passes neat fuel from the bottom of here through those two goes in there straight into the inlet manifold so it's firing neat fuel straight in instead of a choke flap as such uh, the earlier ones had six on them one for each piston but the later ones had two so I'll just put this back together Choke guard if it backfires, it stops the fuel blowing up through those and catching fire. Make sure you put it on the right way. You have to make sure this goes on because that stops. You can adjust the automatic choke by that up and down for richness. You have to do that when the car's warm and then short out the otter switch on the inlet manifold and then you can set your mixture setting on it
that's it till I get it in the card and you have to line all these up before you tighten up the thread on that you have to screw it to the inlet manifold it goes in there not there that's your auto switch now that once that's on there That's your automatic choke with your wires from there. So, when you turn the ignition on, that wire receives power. It goes to here, the power, out of there to there. So when it's when it's a cold temperature, that wire earths out, fires a solenoid in there, sucks that down, allowing neat fuel to go in through here. As it warms up, it works on the reverse to the fan ones. As it warms up, it loses earth, so then it shuts the circuit down, the valve then shuts, the needle lifts up and it runs on normal idle speed. Next week on the workshop. Restoring a 1963 Mini Cooper 997. Um, extremely rusty as you can see. It's outside of the car. <laughs>